Hi everyone, welcome back to more YouTube channel. It's Chris back with my Randstroke thought of the day. And what a thought it is today. A positive thought, a happy thought for all Newcastle United fans, all football fans really, unless you were one of the football fans of the clubs who were witnesses for the Premier League. More on that in a second. But you all know what I'm talking about. Manchester City's victory in their court case against the Premier League about the, the associated process and, and, and investments within owner loans and, 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 and the kind of company transactions and everything else like that. ATP, it's short for. I can't remember what the hell it stands for at the minute, but I'm sure Mark will put up the wonders of the internet in a second because I've had a long day. But let's talk about it. What does it mean for, for Newcastle United? Never mind Manchester City because we're a Newcastle United channel. Well, this is massive. This, this rule only seemed to be brought in in tandem with Newcastle United being bought by the PIF of Saudi Arabia. It was almost a deal that was brought in to, to safeguard the rest of the Premier League against Newcastle United and the Saudis taking over, really having ridiculously massive inter-company deals because the Saudi Arabians and the PIF have got their fingers in so many pies around the world that they would just be able to call on this massive Rolodex of business contacts and have Newcastle United having three, four million, billion pound sponsorship deals and be able to buy Mbappe and Neymar and all these other players, which is what's been quoted by Sky Sports as well, which was ridiculous, really. We were never going to do that, I don't feel. Um, I don't think the club was in a situation to do that. I don't think Eddie Howe was going to have that happen, to be honest. And he was the one who saved us uh, after the takeover had came through. But that was, you know, before all of the financial handcuffs were slapped on. So Manchester City were taking a task on this. It was actually two massive deals stopped in the Manchester City machine, which I think was the, the Bank of Abu Dhabi. And then I think there was, a, there was an airline company as well that was on there, possibly. And they were both stopped uh, by the Premier League's new rules and, and Manchester City felt that that wasn't fair. So this is a separate court case to the alleged 115 charges that Manchester City have got to answer for breaching FFP and PSR. But Manchester City have won this court case and it's weird because both sides are claiming victory. Manchester City are claiming victory using some really strong rhetoric, which I'll talk about in a minute. But the Premier League's also kind of claiming victory here that they think it validates the need for the ATP processes, even though that Man City have just basically proved that they were, they were wrong and they were restricting competition so the Premier League came out with a load of guff load of nonsense really one of the best excuses I saw was they were short staffed which was hilarious um the kind of thing you hear in a fucking coffee shop when you're not being served quick enough, isn't it? But that's a Premier League, by the way, multi-billion pound organisation. This just highlights how ridiculous they are. They rushed these deals through. They totally underestimated the, the power and the knowledge and legal experiences that these huge clubs could afford with world-class lawyers, really. I mean, fucking hell, City have got the De Bruyne and Haaland of lawyers, by the looks of it, to, to do this in the course of the Premier League. And this is off the back of Leicester City winning their claim as well. And it's basically making the Premier League's legal kind of strength look like it's built on sand and clay it's fading away so most of the Premier League now should challenge the status quo and say listen you know your rules are a load of shit really and, and you know half decent lawyers can disprove that with their eyes shut and their bollocks hanging out you know this, that's what it seems to be and that's what Manchester City have done here but what it means for Manchester City is they will be able to have these internal deals and they will be able to have investments and that will help Newcastle United as well but th these sponsorship deals are huge for Newcastle so Newcastle have been so restricted in terms of what they can and can't do yes they brought Noon in for the sleeve and Adidas came in for the kit sponsor, which was great. But we still haven't had a stadium kind of sponsors. We haven't had, you know, training ground sponsors. There's loads of business that we can do. The, the PIF are so well connected and everybody wants to do business with them because they're such a global, you know, entity in terms of business and economy around the world. And now these these kind of barriers have been lifted, so to speak. I think it will open the door for Newcastle United to bring more money, more revenue in. And that will trickle through. It will help with paying the likes of Alexander Rizak, Bruno Guimaraes, Anthony Gordon, more wages, bringing in new players, which we haven't done. Look at the transfer window was was terrible. It reeked of the Mike Ashley era. And speaking of the Mike Ashley era, by the way, 
you know, the Premier League weren't too keen to put the clampers down there when you had Sports Direct plastered all over the fucking stadium. And we earned a bean from that. Less than a bean, half a fucking bean, because it was all going in the pocket. That fat wank. I didn't see the Premier League doing anything about that then. So double standards, guys. But, you know, the Premier League are just the type of slippery bastards that go slithering off and come back with some other way to try and fuck Newcastle United. I'd even Aston Villa to an extent, you know, in the background with, with a newly formed deal. But they did revise this deal in February. But even that's... Had to be looked at again because of the, the the wording within that. But Manchester City's club statement was absolutely epic. You know, they they use words that the Premier League had abused their dominant position, which is incredible. Strong rhetoric for Man City, but fucking superb, by the way. Absolutely brilliant. You know, and then they also said, I think, that it was found to be unlawful. So the restrictions were put on unlawful and in violation of competition law. So these are serious rhetoric that's been put into this this public forum now this court case you know kind of um, records out there in the public forum for everybody to see the premier league are just completely pissing in the wind here they really are the, there is no weight behind this argument if you challenge it and you push hard enough it will topple the fuck over i just don't think the premier league are clever enough or smart enough to beat these people that they're going up against but going back to the premier league's court case so this is interesting so manchester city had a couple of clubs in there as witnesses for them to push their case through which has inevitably been judged to be won and the appeal has been won by the independent body. And those witnesses were, you guessed it, Newcastle United were one, Chelsea were another, and Everton were another as well. Everton's been a serious victim of financial punishment by the Premier League's bullshit rules, points deducted and real issues for them as well. And new owners coming over the hill, they make want to make damn well sure that they can maximise their investment opportunities. Now for the witnesses against this deal... For the Premier League, some awesome names in here, by the way. Arsenal, who are fucking mortgaged to the hilt. I think they owe 200 million quid's worth of loans that they've been able to claim back at such a low rate. Never mind market value, which is what this whole ATP thing is supposed to be about. Arsenal have been paying fuck all on that loan, as well as Manchester United. And they should have been paying market value for those loans. And they're about to be in for a fucking rude awakening when these deals get, or these rules get re rebrandished and reworked on by the Premier League because they've been found to be basically caught with their pants down on this one. So that'll be really interesting. So Arsenal, Manchester United, Brentford, uh, really poor by them. Bournemouth, you know, tin pot clubs, no disrespect to them. And they've been very lucky to come up and, and, and be in the Premier League and do what they've done and been very shrewd in the transfer market. But I don't understand what them being witnesses for the Premier League is going to do, but just basically make everyone else think you're a bunch of shit houses, really. So very, very interesting this is to see where this kind of comes uh, in terms of the the, the change in the, in the landscape of what clubs can and can't do in the transfer market, what they can and can't do in terms of the commercial revenue deals. There'll be loads more fallout from this as well. But in terms of Manchester City, brilliant for them, huge victory for them. Well done, City, for taking these bastards, Richard Masters and the Bastards to task. And for Newcastle United, we'll have to wait and see what happens, what this does mean for us. I do think there'll be more commercial deals pushed through. And that commercial team, Peter Silverstone, etc., they will be pushing a lot more deals over the line to get sponsors in the club to raise the revenue behind the scenes which should hopefully help bring in some quality players in the January transfer window and the summer beyond that. But let us know in the comments below what you guys think about this win for Man City. Are you buzzing? Do you think it's going to mean huge things for Newcastle or are you worried that the Premier League is just going to come up with some other bullshit set of rules to halt the progress of this Newcastle United machine, which is exactly what they did in the first place with this bullshit ATP rule? Let us know what you guys think. We always like to hear from you. We'll try and reply as best we can. We always do that if we can. Uh, if you take the time, we'll take the time to reply as well. Like the video, subscribe if you want to stick around a little bit longer. We'll be back with some more content this week. It's a three-year anniversary. This is great news for the three-year anniversary, by the way. We will do a video on that as well, let you know what we think about the three-year anniversary, where we're at. Are we happy or we sad? We will let you know our thoughts and you can let us know yours in the comments. Have a belt there. Let's hope this makes some real positive changes for the club. We'll see you later. Cheers.